Bradley Lennar here for Bradley Success Systems in this audio succession series, The Prosperity Within, and we want to thank you for joining us. Every month, we release a new program for this series, number two, number three, and so on. This is an audio succession series. You receive these programs in succession if you subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, but you're truly serious about creating the highest quality of life for you and your family, we strongly suggest that you do this. Remember, every single day, there are a number of forces resisting our growth. We'll speak more about this later, but for now, this is a new age, my friends, and today here we start a new journey. A new journey for you. And you are now one of the very few. What do I mean? Well, have you ever wondered why some people are more driven and effective, efficient, and even happier in life? You know, purpose-driven. Well, contrary to popular belief, people who choose to be happy moment to moment on a steady, consistent basis and also exude this cheerfulness are taking brilliant action. You know why? Because they have simply mastered control. Remember, intelligence isn't only the way you think. It's the things you do and the way you act. We're here to tell you it's just not cool to be negative. Negativity squashes potential. When we are happy, creativity opens and we tap more potential in a positive, content mind frame. Also, we must remember that everyone's perception is a little bit different. Perception is affected by beliefs and associations. And as a mirror image of our creator, we as humans continually create. This is what people often miss. Every day, we get more of whatever we give our attention to. And wherever our attention goes is what we will manifest for ourselves. It has been said the brain can have over 70,000 thoughts per day and over 40 thoughts per minute. The problem is 90% of those thoughts are the exact same as yesterday or just a few minutes prior. Then we wonder why we're stuck. Our attention is our thoughts. Direct attention on bad things and believe me, you'll get more of it. To create a prosperous life, we must change our attention, create different thoughts and nurture the things that serve us. Humans are self-fulfilling. Now, unfortunately, we live in a negative world, a world riddled with limitations and limiting opinionated views. Now, this program is designed for you to listen to as much as you can and to remind and inspire you to live at greater levels every single day. We want you to take what we say here everywhere you go and with everything you do. We are your support system and my goal is to be your personal friend that is there for you, inspiring you so you can approach the world with a powerful, prosperous mindset. No one has to know, but for sure your friends and coworkers will see changes in you. We are here to drive you and we are on your side. In addition, our goal is to look ahead and design life precisely how we want it and direct attention in a strategic way within so in effect, our actions take us where we want to go. Most people do not understand or take the time for this. And this is the main reason why they fall short or settle for less in life. This is not for you. As a subscriber to Bradley Success Systems, you will move ahead here. We show you exactly what directs attention and how to control it. So what is the difference? I mean, with these people. Why are some people generally happier and more resourceful on a daily basis? Have you ever really thought about this? Well, studies show it's not genetics. It's the psychology we speak of here, this prosperity within. In addition, I'm here to tell you the majority of the population has been trained to think within a particular framework. This is known as indoctrination. The problem with this framework, it can create limits within our psychology and hold us back on many levels subconsciously. Think about what that means. It's not within our conscious thinking, and for the most part, we can't see it. I'm here to tell you every day there are a number of influences affecting you that you're not even aware of. The subconscious is highly suggestible, and it's extremely powerful, much more than you can imagine. And whenever we go for more, even just getting to the next level, there are a number of forces inherently working against us. The good news is we can change it if we know how. Now, up here in Connecticut, we have drastic mood swings in the weather, you know, primarily after winter. Have you ever come across a warm and a sunny day that has been unannounced, especially after like a long winter? Well, why is it that so many people seem to be more happy and generous and resourceful on this warm and sunny day? 
Why do you become more kind and outgoing and more talkative at the bank line, for example? Why do people become more productive? Well, some say because it's sunny out. Okay, but what makes us happier if it's sunny? Uh, does the sun's rays have some special power? This is not related. It's just a weather pattern. This is not you. The weather is external. So how can something outside of you change your actions and your potential just for this one day? Just for these particular hours? Again, your genetics don't change. Your intelligence can't change that quickly either, nor does your capability. So what happens here? You see, as a child, I used to watch this and wonder why, you know, this would happen particularly during holidays. It's like all year my parents were miserable. But sure enough, two weeks before, everything was different. Apparently, they were always capable. So as a child, I didn't know any better. And I wanted to know why they didn't make themselves happy when it wasn't Christmas. Seems they'd rather just complain all year and be depressed. Now, is this true depression or is this learned behavior? This is what we do to ourselves. And if our real goal in life is to be happy, then why don't we just allow ourselves to do it? We do it during holidays, no matter what our problems are. And I too would become more cheerful, but it was like I was following the crowd. And it didn't make all that much sense to me because I was a kid, a clean slate. I wasn't habituated like most of these adults yet. Uh, do you think at some level we are born with wisdom? You know this is true, but the door slowly closes as we get older. Now, this resourcefulness is always inside you, and the sun and the warmth created a stimulus response. It stimulated you to create a different mind frame. From there, you changed the way you interpreted events every moment for just a little while, and you changed your psychology. You used this prosperity within. Congratulations. Now, take weight loss. Most people have been trained to apply straight discipline. I'm here to tell you the internal parts of your brain your subconscious simply does not work well with self-discipline. And this is why we struggle. This is why most of us fail. But we have solutions. It doesn't matter who you are. Every single person can utilize what we teach at some level. Myself, Troy Publishing, and several researchers have orchestrated simple, easy-to-follow audio programs allowing us to tap more potential, but long-term and every single day. Once this is in line, success can come together because the resistance is minimized. Now, some people might say, well, I don't buy into that. But while you're moving ahead because you took the time here, these are the same people with sour grapes, afraid you'll make them look bad. This is not get rich quick or just positive thinking. This is different. So get ready. For over two decades, I personally have been engrossed in what we now call EBS, Effective Behavioral Science, the technical and metaphysical aspects of what makes people successful, wealthy, and happy. As humans, we must stand back to construct our lives. The key is to work with the elements we have around us now. And just like architects, design a blueprint of who we will become and where we are headed. There are common elements, and here you will find concise principles and action steps to change your world any way you want it. These are the secrets to success and wealthy living, and you can utilize this knowledge within everything you do. You've come across something very special here and extremely valuable. Have you ever wondered how to tap more potential and create life precisely the way you want it? Are you a happy housewife? Are you someone who is happy, but you're just looking to get to the next level? Are you looking for less fear, less burden, more time, more time leverage is the definition of wealth for you, the quality of time with your family. Are you involved with a sport and you're looking to tap focus and potential to get to the level where you can be the best on the field? Or perhaps you're a financial guru, Donald Trump making large deals. Whoever and wherever you are on the wealth and success seeking hierarchy, I'm here to tell you that step number one is to adopt the understanding that there is an internal psychological framework, a formula that has been inherited to some of the most effective and wealth-driven people on the planet. Most can't really articulate this to you because it's just conditioning. And now we have made this simple for the general public. So why do so many people have such a hard time losing weight? Even if you're not like obese, but you're just trying to get leaner, most people struggle their whole lives to get the scale down. Have you ever really wondered why? I mean, really think about this. And take a moment. 
people decide to lose weight. But as time goes by, it's like another force that takes over their body and eventually stops them from eating the right foods. Right? And then they go back. Uh, does this sound familiar? Well, why does this happen? I'll tell you why. Because it's not the diet. It's psychology. And people either loop around or just give up. Most of society has not been taught the right way to change things. So we keep searching for a new diet, thinking that that's the problem. Or people think it's hard. Well, it's not hard for some people. Have you ever really wondered why? Well, their subconscious is simply habituated differently. That's it. You see, I've been on both sides of this. Now, yes, a small percentage have thyroid and or physical abnormalities, but other than that, for weight loss, there is no other reason. It's not our fault. Society robs us, and our brain is not designed to work that way. So the question is, how can we effectively change our habituations and take control now? Well, we can show you how. This is what we do here. We study success and we eat this for breakfast. This program can save you years of time and energy because we get to the nuts and the bolts of what is really happening. We go to the source of the problem and it can make dramatic results quick. There is no waste of time or money. It's a direct route and this can be used in all the areas of your life. It's the daily habits that make us successful. If you establish habits of learning how to make money, then you will have money. The same holds true in any area, but we must get ourselves to do it. I don't have to tell you that self-discipline doesn't work, but other than just a few great speakers, no one else has ever really given us any other technical solutions. Here is your solutions, and now modern science has allowed us to discover exactly how we can effectively change habits quickly and long-term. Once things are in line, the inner mind is free to work a direct path to whatever is most important to you, even while you're asleep. You have taken the first steps here. Once again, my name is Bradley Lennart, and welcome. Who am I? Well, I grew up in a small town, and I procrastinate my childhood because I don't like to go back there. And this is not about me. This is about you. But I need to show you where I came from because my past drove me for an extreme understanding of human behavior. It allows me to be here today in front of this microphone. A lot of what we talk about, people simply overlook because we are all so busy and the world has been trained to accept that certain things are just a mystery. But the laws of cause and effect states that there's a cause to every result. So in turn, there has got to be a result or a role for every cause. If you've ever wondered what makes some people more driven and effective, the secret lies in the subconscious. My friends, things don't just happen by default. Every single situation or circumstance in life can be tracked backwards to its cause. If you change the cause, you eventually will get different results. And basically, there's always a reason or an answer for everything in life. Your job is to find these answers. And with humanity, many believe we are on the verge of a new consciousness. And it's just a matter of time. Humans are always evolving, so we will continually find answers as we go. We'll speak more about this in the following programs. But for now, I have a question for you. As you're listening to me, it's pretty safe to say that your heart is beating. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> well, how is this happening? Who is beating your heart? Some say God. Some say Jehovah, or even the rhythm of the universe. The truth is, right now, this other part of your brain, your subconscious, is beating your heart, supplying blood and oxygen to the cells of your body. You are beating your heart right now. I want you to think about this. Now, this is not some Einstein brilliant insight, but take the time to think about how powerful this really is. This happens every single day without you even knowing about it. And I'm here to tell you, your subconscious is also doing other things that hold you back every single day without you knowing about it. This part of the brain's main concern is survival. And if this is all you've ever been trained to ask of it, then this is all it's ever been trained to give you and not much more. Most of society has not been taught how to utilize this part of the brain. And there is no school's curriculum that teaches us this. Think of the subconscious as the storage room of everything that is not in your conscious thinking. It stores your previous life experiences, your beliefs, your memories, your skills, all the situations you've ever been through and all the images you've ever seen. Have you ever watched someone learning to drive a car? Well, in the beginning, they can't hold a conversation while driving. Why? Because they're focused on the different actions needed to drive the car. 
This is because they are still using the conscious mind to drive. After a few weeks, driving becomes natural and it happens automatically without even having to think about it. Unfortunately, this person might even start using the cell phone and talking to their friends while driving. This happens because the driving habit has been transferred from the conscious to the subconscious. And then the conscious mind becomes free. Now, some people might say, well, I'll just push through it. And they might get lucky, but research has shown that 85% of the time it doesn't work. You see, this part of the brain is more powerful than anything you can will upon it. The trick is to know this, but at the same time realize it simply hasn't evolved like the cerebral cortex or the conscious part of our thinking has. Don't you see? It's like a child. It needs guidance. It needs direction. And once you do this, everything can change because all the layers of you are direct, on purpose, and working for your cause. Most people go their whole lives without this knowledge, and as a result, they don't come close to their potential. This is not for you. Now, I want you to know the technical aspects here don't necessarily need to be fully understood. And if you hear something that sounds technical, just listen. It is important that you simply listen to this as much as you can. However, the key is to do the workshop with me on the next CD. You can do this. We will release one program for this series every month. On those CDs will be a lot of insight and several of the latest techniques to this directive psychology. This will keep you habituated toward success and whatever wealth means to you in your life. For over two decades, this has been my complete focus, full on figuring out the formula. And now we have grown exponentially. Every day people ask about our products, they want to know if it's right for them. I tell them, in addition to the psychology, there are certain metaphysical laws that we need to consider. If we abide within these laws, we can reap fruits of life. However, if we violate any one of them, negative situations can happen as seen through society. Depression, lack of direction, frustration, relationship issues, addictions, the list goes on. And success and wealth is a psychology. It in itself is a way of thinking. The money and material objects associated are a result. They're only a side effect. And there are no pearly white gates to walk through when you achieve success like a lotto winner or the price is right or a child on Christmas morning. Don't you see? Society has conditioned us ever since we can remember to look for some end result of extraordinary excitement. There is no finish line or goalpost like sports events that have become commonplace through society. There is no treasure to obtain like so many movie scripts written training us to think within this framework. This is not a conspiracy, but by default, this is particularly why we tend to reach for things that are a drastic quick fix, like alcohol, drugs, or even adultery. This is a conditioned search for an end result filled with excitement instead of living in the moment as a constant. It is short-term thinking and it ignores the fact that success, and yes, even wealth, is a journey. And needless to say, there's a price to pay. Some people never become aware. We have to remember that we have been trained to think a certain way here. Awareness in itself can help us take control. Now, with sports events and alcohol, there's nothing really wrong with this. It's the people who waste their time and attention and indulge instead of like learning a new skill or moving ahead in life that screw their lives up. I don't have to tell you this. You see it every day. Now, with all this being said, my question to you is, what exactly is prosperity? What is wealthy living to you? Have you ever really defined this? Well, first off, I'm here to tell you wealth actually has very little to do with dollars. It is whatever is most important to you. And prosperity is simply the meaning we choose to attach to any given situation or event, oftentimes habitual. Success and prosperity is our interpretation of life and nothing more. Again, it is a way of thinking, feeling good, and the search for feeling good intelligently. And that's it. Now, to define the word psychology, it would be the way we as humans interpret our reality and the framework from which we think upon. If you do not take care of what's inside you, 90% of the time you will lose it. Like 90% of the lotto winners or these success stories of millionaires that lose it many, many times over until they learn the lesson. Look, if you think you're too smart to lose that kind of money, think again. The subconscious always prevails. You need to make very sure it's on board. So again, wealth and success is a psychology. Prosperity is a mindset.
I cannot say this enough because there's nothing more to look for. This is how we move ahead. Right this second, you can be wealthy. You may not have money, but as I stated, you must master this mind frame and this in itself will attract abundance. If you don't, I'm telling you, it will go unappreciated and this is the paradox. It's like a test. Work on who you are, even if you are upstanding. And this, my friends, will bring you everything you need. Why? Because it's a law. Humans must grow to be happy, no matter who you are, whether it's intellectually, purpose-driven, or spiritually. And we must contribute or we begin to die. And if you're looking for large homes and nice automobiles, there's nothing wrong with this, as long as you're not compromising integrity. However, Just like many things in life, there's always a catch-22 or a flip side to this way of thinking. And to get it right, to obtain these things long-term, you need a deeper level of understanding. This series is very different than many other success programs you will find. There is specific information here you will not find anywhere else. There are metaphysical laws, and most programs either sway to one side or the other. But to infuse these together is the combination that create anything that is most important to you into your life. Always remember, we are spirits living within a material time frame. We need both. Now, Edward Hubble discovered the universe is quickly expanding. And unless we are expanding along with it, then we resist it. And this is where general society goes wrong. It is inherent within us to become very unhappy unless we are continued toward growth. But on the flip side, we are habituated to take the least path of resistance. So there's this conflict. And this is where people get stuck. They are not contributing up to their potential, and they wonder why they're depressed or floundering at some level. Or it comes out in distractions or behaviors that do not benefit them. You see, subconsciously, they are frustrated. Have you ever seen this with a child? Remember, we are just grown children, and some of us grow efficiently in one area, but lack in others. We are unhappy without momentum or without a grand purpose, and the only way to create true momentum is through a ton of action, not just an average amount. If we use an average amount, what do you think your results will be? That's right, average, just like everybody else. There is only one way to shine above the rest, steady, consistent, Massive action. Consistent productivity toward a purpose in life is how we are designed. If we violate this, problems will manifest in different forms. As children and teens, we are bored, and this habituates us to do the least to get by, or it trains us to think something horrible will happen if we overwork ourselves. And it's simply not true. Just like someone we all know, I also fly helicopters. Heli pilots are like a family because we are far and few between, and this aircraft is designed to fly within a certain envelope. An auto rotation is a procedure where a helicopter pilot will literally shut the engine down and glide to safety. When most people hear about this maneuver, they say you've gotta be crazy to do that. Well, the truth is the helicopter was initially built for this. It was literally designed to fly its best within this flight configuration. And we do auto rotations every day, just to practice. I've gotten to the point to realize that I am actually safer in an auto rotation than in forward flight. Remember, we can retrain our mind to want to take tons of action, and once you do, it creates energy, and you are fulfilled with momentum. Once you realize this and ignore all the crap that society imposes upon us that makes us lazy, your whole life changes, because then you are flying within your design flight envelope not squandering time on too many social activities or leisures like most of society is trained to do. Look, especially if you live in America, other countries laugh at us because we live like kings here, but we still always manage to find a way to complain. Have you ever wondered why so many foreigners come to the States and become rich? Because they see the massive opportunity. Now, yes, we do have a huge deficit and the economy has been down, but compared to what? The U.S. of A? I mean, come on, this is a new age and we must realize that we are responsible for our own personal economy. The world has changed, my friends, and this is the age of the entrepreneur. Look at life globally and realize there are trillions and trillions of dollars on this planet. And if finances is your issue, then your job is to get some of it. And that's it. The truth is, when gauging wealth, you need to think about assets, not dollars, but that's for a later program. 
Also, don't you dare even think for a second that I'm unpatriotic. Remember, I'm the guy who toured through 16 countries as a lead singer entertaining our troops abroad. I saw what our troops go through, away from their families, lonely, all for the effort to protect us. I take great pride knowing I was able to bring just a little bit of America to the real heroes of this country. Now, it's been said that Einstein had a bit of autism, and it allowed him to look at life globally. It proved to be very beneficial for him, and you need to do the same. He lived in Germany, but he also considered himself a citizen of the world. He was able to step out and look back and not be caught up in local hyperbole. And there is such thing as collective consciousness. We will speak more about this next month, and we will explain to you how this affects society today as a whole. But for now, just know that even Einstein finally agreed with this. Back in 1927, there was a conference on physics held in Belgium. A lot of brilliant minds came together as a collaboration to discuss mind over matter and its relation to quantum mechanics. This included Einstein, also an Austrian physicist, Wolfgang Pauli, Werner Heisenberg, and the famous Niels Bohr. Now, Niels Bohr and Heisenberg proposed to Einstein that the minds of the researchers were actually influencing the experiments that they were doing. Einstein always gravitated toward theories that were based upon mathematical equations, so he initially discounted the idea. Until years later. Einstein finally admitted that although it defied every single mathematical equation, that this did in fact happen. He said, paraphrase, Anyone seriously involved in science eventually becomes convinced that there is a spirit vastly superior than that of man. And this spirit is manifest within the laws of this universe. My question to you is this. How is it that a nightingale knows exactly which way is south when it's time to migrate for the winter? How does a large school of fish quickly move at the same time in the same direction without any warning all at once? How do a group of women closely together, all within the same living quarters, eventually become on the same menstrual cycle? The answers, there is in fact a communication within nature, a force unseen to man that organizes everything. Once you understand this, I mean really understand that we are spirits living within a material time frame, that we are here through just a passage of time, you start to interpret the world a little differently for what it really is, like a child. Things change because you see globally and you simply do not involve yourself caught up with drama or emotions that are contrary to your real purpose in life. This, in itself, attracts more of what you want. Like I said, wherever our attention goes is where our life goes. Do not put your attention on wanting. You know why? Because you get more wanting. Put your attention on the opportunity and abundance that has been given to each and every one of us and continues to exist on this amazing planet we live on every single day, regardless of the economy or the weather. If you doubt what I'm saying, just look out the window. Can you see it? Look at the sky, the clouds, the trees, the leaves, the sun, the colors. It's right there in all its glory waiting for you to notice. I mean, we have so much to talk about. I can go on forever, and I know this gets in deep, but if you're looking for answers, we got them. We need to get to the workshop, and I need to tell you my story. Who am I? Well, I grew up in a small town in Connecticut, right in the center of the state, and what set me apart is I always had large dreams. I mean, gigantic dreams. But there was a dark side to my childhood, and I had stepfathers that were very violent. Uh, the first would get drunk and destroy the entire house. I mean, he would completely demolish the whole house and threaten us. I had many nights as a child fearing for my life. This was not a good beginning for me. Uh, my family would have to start over each time because he would destroy all our belongings. Now, I'm not here for a pity party or sympathy. That was a long time ago. But I need to show you what has led me for such an intense view of things. This showed me what not to do. This showed me how not to act. However, as I started to get older, I realized I too would do the same thing to anything that came good into my life. Not physically, but I would destroy any wealth or success I had, even if I worked extremely hard for it, and especially within relationships. I know it makes no sense, but this was subconscious. Uh, do you see the pattern? You see, I decided on a conscious level to oppose my stepfather's behavior.
But this other system inside had another plan. It wasn't quite on board. Now, I was a very extreme case, but we all had this sabotage at some level, and society's conditioned us to stop ourselves at a certain success threshold. You see, my case revealed a science, and every person's threshold is different, and it can change. Again, this happened unconsciously, and this is where the secret lies. I had a lot to work through. However, just like we provide resistance in the gym to our muscles to become stronger, this created the resistance I needed to have an extreme understanding of human behavior. I had to get this right, and I had no other choice. You say, no, not me. Yes, even you. We all do this at some level, but we're unaware of it. When you're supposed to be dieting, but you get up in the middle of the night to eat that chocolate cake, you know intellectually that this is wrong. But you do it anyway. You see... You want what's right for yourself, but you're hypnotized for instant gratification. And at that particular time, your subconscious thinks at some level it's helping you. We will get further in detail with this through the workshops, but if you have identified any behavior that does not serve you, there are four simple steps we need to do within this directive psychology. In the intro CD, we told you that this part of the brain works off association, right? So first, we need to ask ourselves how this behavior serves us at the subconscious level. For instance... I talk about sleep eating because I was one of those people. I used to sleep eat. Yes, I admit it. And sure as the sun rises, every night I used to get up and binge eat about an hour after I fell asleep. Almost every single night. Now, when I got clear and I used this psychology, here is the reason why my subconscious was doing this. I didn't want to shrink. I didn't want to shrink. Now, what does that mean? Well, through the course of my life, I like to bodybuild. And even now, I pretty much stick to a diet that provides energy and keeps my metabolism fast. It also keeps my body strong and lean and fit. I believe this to be very important for successful living. However, when a bodybuilder diets, he risks the chance of losing some strength and also muscle size because of the lack of calories. Calories can hold weight that is fat or calories can hold weight that is muscle. Either way, you need a certain amount of calories to keep a certain amount of body mass. The only way to counteract this without gaining fat is to eat a lot of protein calories. Little tip for dieters, if you're going to cheat on your diet, try to make it protein foods. For the most part, protein won't stick to you like a sugary or carbohydrate food will. The only problem with a lot of animal protein is your body becomes acidic, so be careful. Now, my subconscious was literally taking over and sleep eating because it was afraid that the dieting would shrink my muscles. Now, (laughs) once I figured this out and did these steps, everything changed. I stopped sleep eating, and this can be done with any behavior. After a few weeks, I saw that I still had this tendency, but it was only when I was really pressured or stressed. When humans are stressed, we become primal. We often regress with stress. So I just went through these steps a few more times and my sleep eating stopped completely. I haven't had a problem since. We will step you through this in the last three steps in the workshop, and it's so easy. Also, other techniques that can change your behavior and set the powers within. Remember, it doesn't have to be difficult to be effective. You just got to know the right things to do. So my question is, what is it that you think gets results in life? Well, there are three major entities. The way we behave, the paths we take, And where our attention goes effectively creates all our results. And we can retrain our subconscious to support proper behavior. Now, a tip for relationships, if you're involved, often to make relationships really work, we need to find out what we may be doing to support bad behavior. And then there's always a lag time. There's a lag time after we start doing the right things. And sometimes it's longer than we want or expect it to be. We don't wait to the end of the lag time and our spouse is reacting off something in the past, something seemingly illogical, and we start pointing the finger. And then there starts the cycle. Can you tell I've been there? But I figured this out. You need to stay on their side and look back and think what you might have done to trigger your spouse. Again, it could have been something that was in the past. And this is the key. Both people must agree to do this. Most arguments are miscommunications or resentments from the past. Also, both people must agree and absolutely decide 100% that they truly want to be in this relationship and absolutely no games. Now, as crazy as it sounds, a lot of people don't solidify that decision and they have one foot in and one foot 
ready to leave. And then they wonder why there's problems. Now, we have done this in case studies, 74 different couples. And when both people do this, it never fails. Another tip, remember, everybody's perception and ways of doing things in life is a bit different. Everybody filters through their own personal beliefs, values, and associations. It's not right or wrong. This is variety, okay? Try not to assume. Get the facts, and we can train people how to treat us, just like Pavlov's dogs. We cannot reward for bad behavior, but we do have to wait through this lag time. This is your job in any relationship. Also, don't ever share what happens in your relationship with the outside world. A relationship should be viewed as a sacred safe haven. This is not for gossip or any of your friends to ever know about. You are better than that. If you do that, it will come back around and haunt your relationship at a later date. In fact, any type of gossip or complaining about another human being is for lower life forms. This is not for you. You have better things to give your attention to. If you complain or speak badly about another person without them around, this demonstrates lack of integrity. You operate at higher levels than that. Now, back when I was a kid, my sister lived in a different state. She would come back to Connecticut on weekends, and one particular evening, she was scheduled to babysit me, but she won three tickets to go see a little rock band that was in town. A little rock band called Journey. I'll never forget the night. I was six years old. We walk into this coliseum. There's 50,000 people, and I'm just a child. I don't know what to expect. So <laughs> we're waiting for the band, and all of a sudden, the lights go down. And it's pitch black. And there's nothing like Journey fans. The crowd is roaring. And I look over on center stage and there's this little door. This door opens and a beam of light shoots out. Then you see the silhouette. And the lead singer, Steve Perry, walks out. His bandmates behind him. I'm just a kid. I don't know how to process this. So I start swelling, you know, with emotion here. And the band's playing. And I'm holding it in. And all of a sudden I burst into tears. And I'm weeping. Now... I'll never forget this because there's a realm of time in everyone's life before social conditioning. Well, your brain is like a sponge. And again, this is before society gets in our way. Where we as children can really see the world for what it is and we're not clouded by limiting views. Before society's hypnosis. This showed me that there was much more out there than what I was dealing with at home. It set my psychology up in such a way to believe. And I never stopped believing. It showed me that dreams do come true. It literally set me out on a path, a search for greater living, but I didn't have it easy. At 12, I was forced to move out and ended up living with a friend who was a drummer. And we started a band. 17 years later, I find myself touring through 16 countries, entertaining American troops abroad. I've seen all the cultures, my friends, and all the basic elements remain the same throughout humanity. However, I had a lot of subconscious self-sabotage, but I focused. On tour, I studied from psychology and neuroscience to philosophy and metaphysics, completely engrossed in figuring out the strategies to successful living. The formula. Now, this is what I do. It allows me to contribute to a greater good. It's amazing. I'm so happy in exactly where I'm supposed to be in life right now, standing here, talking to you. You see, I know there's someone out there that I can influence, that you can influence. And of course, there will be naysayers, but I can't worry about them. They're just part of the challenge. Nobody said it would be easy. I know I can say things here that will change the direction of your life and others forever. And that is a gift. Not just for you, but for me. I was there, floundering, depressed at times, undirected and confused. But I literally changed it all through the expansion of myself. And now this is what I ask of you. Even if you're already successful, the reason for living is to expand. When a human being stops growing, they start to die. I ask you to reignite the dreams that lie within you. I have nothing to sell here. You already had the CD. In addition, my distributors pay me up front. I have nothing to lose. But you do. Let's say you say to yourself, that was a good talk and that Bradley guy, he's all right. But I... I'm not going to take the time to do this or take this to heart. I just don't have the time or the focus or the energy. I'm here to tell you that our lives go by very quickly. Most Americans, 78 to 82 years, females a little longer, and there's only a certain amount of time that has been given to each and every one of us. And most of us have the wrong time perspective. Most of us are trained to squander time. And time is emotion. 
Wherever our focus goes is where our time goes and wherever our life goes. Time is the one and only indispensable resource. Time is the one and only thing that can be converted to wealth and we need to consistently gauge our time. Useless phone calls, interruptions, emotional upheavals, complaining about people and events that we cannot control, others dragging you around with their agenda. The list goes on, killing our momentum, and once momentum is destroyed, forget it. If you do not take these principles to heart and apply them within your dreams or within your field, someone else will come and quickly take your place. Why should that be them and not you? Why should someone else live the dream that was meant for you? Take control. This is your prosperity within. I ask you to live at higher levels today, starting right this second. With strategy, desire, repetition, and the principles you'll learn here, you can do anything. And to think any different is just sheer weakness. You see, society has trained us to think that people who decide to be happy every day must just be go lucky or they're naive. Well, I'm here to tell you it's the other way around. I've been through living hell and back, and those who are strong enough to take the difficult experiences, learn from them, and then leave them behind are the most brilliant on the planet. They are the ones with true strength. And by the way, most of us get to the end of our lives and wonder what the hell happened to all the things we ever wanted for ourselves, all our dreams. Ask my 99-year-old grandmother. She herself says, where did all the time go? In my book, 10 Decades of Wisdom, my grandmother has a message for the world. She shares with us to never squander ever even one single second of our lives, that this life goes by much quicker than we ever expected to. And before you know it, you too will be wondering where your life went. And most of all, to do it now, whatever it is, to just start the process. Who cares what the neighbors think? Where will they be when you're 99 years old? Whatever your dreams are in life, take one small step toward it and momentum will start to work for you in your favor. Don't you see? God has given us all a small amount of time here as a gift. And regardless of what you have been trained to think, it is our responsibility to use this time intelligently and proficiently, especially if you have a family, especially if you have children. You lead by example. You are the one with this information now. If you go the rest of your life without using it, then you are at fault. And if you do not have the money to put your existing or child to be through Harvard, when it's time that he or she gets accepted, then I hope you're glad you squandered your time on meaningless actions like most of society does, instead of following through on optimizing time and on this program. You are the one responsible right here, right now. Your time is here. Your time is now. There is no other time and there is no more excuses. Nothing is more important than the one and only universal gift that has literally been given to all of us, this realm of time called life. You decide where your time goes. This is your life and no one else's. Shut the cell phone off because you have important things to do and business that you have to take care of right now that can affect your child's lives now. Schedule a time during the day once per day to get back to people. Unless business related or family, those who don't like it can get out of your life. They will come back if they are intelligent and real friends. Does this make sense to you? This is the right program for you and now is the time for you to focus and understand that wealth is all around you, right here, right now. If you do not have this psychology in place, you can have all the material objects and money that you could ever dream of having and be a complete dead broke failure, dead broke. Like so many rock stars or celebrities we see. So sad. There's definitely a lesson to be learned here. Even the eloquent millionaires that we see and we think are so happy, our research has shown that most of them aren't. I know people who make over 10 million per year who are the unhappiest people on the planet. These people have nice homes and fast cars and have achieved society's model of success. But they took themselves with them and they are dead broke poor and some people never get it. Do you get it? I hope so. Clichés are clichés for a reason because they are dead true across the board. And with success and wealth, you either are or you aren't. And you decide whether you are successful within every single moment. You either are on a journey toward growth and fulfillment or you're slowly sliding backwards. And there is no one particular event that dictates either. And there is no in between. You see, the decision lies within you to create your own reality. We can create our own environment, but not how society has taught us to react and or squander our time, which is our wealth. You are wealthy right now because God gave you time. 
time on this earth. Either upward or downward, our creator gave us this gift, but rarely do we use it. Now, by doing the right things and through cause and effect, we can predictably create 70% of what we get in life. There is 28% that needs to be directed by the meaning we give it, and the last 2% has got to be just left up to the F word. Faith that everything happens for its own benefit. Bad things do happen to good people. Things that we cannot control, horrible things of extreme magnitude. But if you really look at those percentages, it's not that bad. I mean, the media focuses on all the disorder and has trained us to do the same. They do this to get our attention and it creates ratings. But this is only a very small percentage of the world. The world is absolutely enormous. And it has been proven that our brains simply cannot fathom how enormous this world is or how much 7 billion people really is. And relative to this grand scope, our world is basically in order. We need to start to appreciate that. Now, I know there are countries in complete chaos and we have human disasters from earthquakes to terrorism. But I can personally go down to the local department store right now in the small town that I grew up in and stand at the front door from the moment it opens at 6 a.m. to the moment it closes at 11 p.m. And through this whole entire time, I can literally watch people flood in and flood out. Now, within this entire 16 hours of watching people flood through these doors, I will never see the same person twice. I mean, I will never see them again, ever. Now, this is a small little town that I grew up in, considered to be kind of rural. It's not a large city. It's not even a city at all. It's not even a large town. It's a small town. And we have two department stores like that there, not to mention all the other stores. Now, I know every store doesn't have people flooding through all day, but you can get in your car right now and drive from, let's say, Connecticut, less than halfway across the country to Missouri and drive through town after town after town after town, just like my hometown or larger. Each town having their own department stores. Now, this is just halfway through a small country and only in one angled direction. There are 196 countries on this planet, and some are as gigantic as Russia or Africa. Now, I know some of this is uninhabited, but the brain simply cannot even fathom this. Also, People think in terms of million being close to or somewhat close to a billion. It's not. Again, our brain can't fathom how much one billion really is. It can't even perceive it. As of now, there are seven billion people on this planet. We all visualize and worry about horrible things happening every day because this is actually part of our brain's safety mechanism. This is how we have thrived as a species. We will get more into this in the next program, but the media, your peer groups, your family, the news, everything you've ever heard has conditioned you to think that we live in a horrible environment and it simply isn't true. Just listen to people talk. Go to a local bar and just listen to what comes out of their mouth. Mostly negative, right? I mean, I don't even know you. I've never met you, but I can pretty much safely predict right now how your day will go on most days. I mean, generally. I mean, let's say you work a job. You get up, you drive to work. I could pretty much predict that you're not gonna witness like any mass murders or anything. You're probably gonna drive home and if you're like most people, you'll hit some traffic. You'll use the F word, not faith. And during this time, you'll run a cyclical thought pattern of how horrible your life is. Now, this will trigger you to think about all the bad, terrible things that happen to you on a daily basis. Now, with this, we have a lot of social influence and every single person falls prey to this here at some level. There are a number of different specific variables and it affects us somewhere at some time. If you think you're an example of success and wealth, well, that's great. But you still need this program for reinforcement because everything around you basically is trying to drag you to its own level. Now, this is Galileo's law of inertia. It's like gravity. We are spiritual beings living amongst specific laws of our universe. However, we are living within a material existence and within a human psychology. In our material existence, there has always been a beginning and an ending to everything we've ever touched, tasted, smelled, seen, or been exposed to. And our psychology, something that we have adopted within this existence, simply cannot fathom anything that does not have a beginning or an ending. This is our superstition of materialism, and we are extremely attached to the thought of wealth equaling something that is attainable through material objects. 
Now, some of this has got to be because we do live within a material time frame. However, we cannot forget where we came from. And I'm here to tell you somewhere along the way, humanity has become flawed. And it's just getting worse. We live within a close to a perfect ecosystem for now, but with a flawed society. And we've gotten so far away from the origin of our existence. And on top of that, we have a psychology that has been willed upon us and swayed. How do we create lasting change within our lives? How do we live a prosperous life filled with meaning on purpose every single moment? Is this possible? Can this be for real? I'm here to tell you that it is. This program is one of the most important things you will ever do for yourself. It will give you what you need. My friends, this is not just hyperbole. Listen to what I'm saying here. We are all somewhat hypnotized. Not in a weird way, but we are all trained socially. Just a little bit. You need to give this some thought because if you understand and utilize it properly, you can easily create a very successful reality for you and your family. These techniques work off association in the extrathalamic control modulatory system. This is a part of the brain known as the ECMS. Gigantic word, but this system within your brain is responsible for regulating arousal and sleep weight transitions. In addition to that, it literally filters your reality. As humans, there's only so many things that we can pay attention to within any given amount of time. Otherwise, there's like this sensory overload and your brain simply cannot keep up. This system within our brain regulates this. Dependent upon our beliefs, our values, what we've been taught, and our internal associations, this system literally dictates what you can or cannot see. Wealthy and effective people simply think just a little bit differently, and this psychology allows them to see opportunities that are around us every single day. Regardless of the economy, or whether the Democrats or the Republicans are in office, Statistics tell us that most large and successful businesses on this planet start in a bad economy. Now, why do you think this is? I'll tell you why. Because this created the pressure that allowed them to push harder than anyone else. And the economy simply doesn't always matter all that much. Not with this way of thinking. Not with this way of thinking at all. Each and every one of us is our own personal economy. Do not buy into the hype. It's a waste of your attention, which is your time, which is your wealth. As the old saying goes, specific elements under tons of pressure for a long amount of time eventually creates diamonds. A person who understands this takes massive, consistent, steady action, is less likely to ever give up, and also taps greater potential because there is less doubt. In turn, this creates different results. It is self-fulfilling. This is how the words seeking ye shall find and we conceive what we believe work. I have broken this down. Every single religion known to man across the globe has one agreeable common element that we must believe before we can see. And within these universal laws, humanity has organized religion as an attempt to structure these laws. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but for sure, somewhere along the journey, we have lost our way. Now, as as obvious as this sounds, most people don't take the time to really look at this. We must now more than ever take control of what we attract to ourselves. Do not listen to the masses. And those people who cannot roll with these changes to this world will continue on a downward spiral to be obsolete into oblivion, regardless of any statistic. We live on a planet of massive abundance with massive opportunity. And if you are willing to create it, you absolutely can. Our lives were meant to be a wondrous journey, but we as humans have literally gotten in our own way. And it's simple, but specific. This is why most of society struggle. They simply do not understand. As a result, the quality of their life suffers and the problems that occur within society has been accepted as normal. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not normal. Your life was meant to be fulfilling. Now, we work off three major entities. The first, I already told you, the ECMS also known as the RAS. Second, NLP, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming. And third, BCBS, that's Basic Core Belief Structure. We also have researchers in hypnotherapy and we teach long-term reconditioning. On top of that, universal laws. This world is headed toward a higher consciousness and I would consider it a privilege to lead you there. But you've got to become aware. That through society, your subconscious is continually being set up for failure. And you need a balance. 
You need something that opposes that. We are realists, not just positive thinking, and we get your results. We need to stay aware. Don't get caught up. Now, on this sunny day, Bush was still in office. The Democrats still own the Senate or the House, and our economy was still the worst it's been in years. But you were happy for that little bit of time. You created a certain headspace and you became more resourceful. Studies show that humans are an average of 88% more efficient in a happy, focused headspace. There are other variables, obviously, and it's the resourcefulness you tap while you are happy because you rid yourself of psychological baggage for those hours. Some people, whether it's conscious or subconsciously, tap this potential on a daily basis. As a cumulative effect, they become more successful in life. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed except your psychology, the way you perceive things. And it's so obvious if you just watch human behavior. This is Bradley Lennart signing out for this CD. In the next programs, we will speak about collective scotomas, the hundredth monkey, and much more. We'll see you soon, and next time we'll make it a little shorter, okay? This is the first program, so we got a lot to say, and I'm really excited you're on board. Remember, live full throttle, and thank you. <laughs>